It's November 1945. Pregnant mothers with children in tow stand in serpentine queues in front of government-run shops to buy milk. This is to avail of the British-ruled municipal corporation of Bombay-run Bombay Milk Scheme. The plan was to import milk from the district of Kaira in the Bombay Presidency, over 400 kilometers away. A company called Polson Limited in Anand, Gujarat was awarded this contract. Polson created a network of milk contractors across the district, bullied them into selling milk at a low price and then resold it at a much higher price to the government. This little monopoly scheme led to Polson making huge profits. The Bombay government started getting a steady supply of milk as planned. People got it for cheap and contractors took their cut. All parties were happy except the farmers. The farmers were forced to sell milk to Polson at whatever price they quoted because although they managed to produce a lot of milk, they just did not have the cold storage facilities required to store this highly perishable product. They just had no option. But then an idea emerged. What if the farmers banded together and started a cooperative? What if they collectively controlled the supply so that the likes of Polson wouldn't be able to have a monopoly this simple idea would change the dairy industry in India forever. Welcome to a century of stories brought to you by IDFC First Bank. Always you first. I am Kunal Vijaykar and this is the story of the white revolution and how rivers of milk started flowing in India. Imagine this situation. A British-owned company has a monopoly on a very essential product and are exploiting farmers and profiting from it. So what do the farmers do? Tribhuvan Das Kishibhai Patel saw this problem and decided he needed to do something about it. He was a lawyer and a social activist and a big follower of Mahatma Gandhi. And Gandhi was a big believer in the cooperative system. Gandhi had written about this precise problem in his weekly magazine Harijan in 1942. He wrote, The most important question for consideration was whether cow farming should be in the hands of individuals or done collectively. It is quite impossible for an individual farmer to look after the welfare of his cattle in his own home in a proper and scientific manner. I firmly believe too that we shall not derive the full benefits of agriculture until we take to cooperative farming. Tribhon Das Patel saw merit in this idea, gathered a few farmers and went to meet Sardar Vallabhai Patel to look for a solution. Sardar Patel understood the problem intimately since he had spent years working with farmers and had seen the potential of cooperatives. He asked the farmers to launch a movement and establish a dairy cooperative in the district of Kaira. But he warned the farmers and told them that the British would not be happy and that they would lose out on income for a few weeks and months to come. All warnings aside, the farmers were determined to fight. And so the movement began. Sardar Patel sent his close confidant, Moraji Desai, to Kaira with the mission to establish the Dairy Cooperative and to arrange for protests against the British. On 4th January 1946, Moraji Desai called for a meeting of the farmers in the village of Samarkha. It was decided that each village of the Kaira district should establish a cooperative dairy and supply milk directly to the Bombay Milk Scheme. As expected, the British-ruled Bombay government denied the permit to establish a milk cooperative. The farmers went on strike against the decision. For the next 15 days, not a drop of milk would leave from the district of Kaira. Bombay went dry. Finally, the government had to give in. The commissioner of the Bombay Milk Scheme came to Kaira with his deputy and accepted the demands of the farmers. The Kaira District Cooperative Milk Producers Union was born. 
on the 14th of December, 1946. The union helped farmers aggregate their product and supply it to the Bombay Milk Scheme. It worked like this. Farmers would contribute milk in whatever quantity possible for them and get an equitable share of the profit made by the union, providing them a steady source of income. With the collective resources of the union, it would help them build infrastructure to pasteurize the milk. This model unleashed a literal white flood. From the little capacity of 250 liters of milk in a day, the capacity of the union quickly increased to nearly 5,000 liters. It created a surplus. The Bombay Milk Scheme could not consume this volume of milk. The surplus grew bigger and bigger as the winter set in because buffaloes produced nearly double the amount of milk in cold weather. Surplus milk now became a big problem. This is where a mechanical engineer arrived on the scene who came up with another bright idea. Why don't we just turn all this extra milk into milk powder? Enter Dr. Verghese Kurian. Kurian was a mechanical engineer with a minor in nuclear science. <laughs> the opportunities were limitless for a young Verghese, but Tribundas came into his life and presented the surplus milk problem to Dr. Kurian. Kurian was hired as the manager at the KDC MPL and was tasked with coming up with a solution. Kurian went to meet Dr. Harishan Dalaya. Harishan Dalaya was the inventor of the first spray dryer for buffalo milk in the world. Dr. Kurian went to him and said, come work with us for a week or so and see how you like it. Dr. Dalaya stayed on and brought in several technological advancements such as establishing the process to make skim milk powder as well as condensed milk. This helped solve the surplus problem of the union. In 1949, Dr. Kurian renamed this union to something that we all know and love today. Amul. Amul, the name was inspired from the Sanskrit word Amulya, meaning priceless. Under the leadership of Dr. Kurian, Amul quickly became a household brand across the country and entered the business of other dairy products. It is now 1965 and the Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri decides to visit the milk district of Kaira. During his stay at a farmer's house, he notices the prosperity of the district and of its people. When asked how this has happened, they all seem to echo the same name. Dr. Verghese Kurian. Inspired by what he saw, Shastri returned to Delhi and decided to replicate the Amul model across the country. He called it Operation Flood. In 1965, the Government of India establishes the National Dairy Development Board and appoints Dr. Kurian as its chairman. Five years later, Operation Flood begins in full swing. The operation was executed in three phases. Phase one, to create a demand in the urban and metropolitan areas of India, increase the market share of milk producers, and improve the quality of cattle. Phase two, these efforts led to a rapid growth of the milk market. Nearly 42 lakh milk producers and 43,000 villages were now part of the milk economy, selling milk in over 290 urban markets. And phase three, the final step was taken by providing better vaccinations, animal care, and diet plans for cattle, which improved their yield even more. The success of Operation Flood was massive from being a milk-deprived nation dancing to the tunes of British colonial rulers. India went on to become the world's largest producer of milk in a span of just three decades. Thanks for this, Dr. Kurian. You've been watching A Century of Stories brought to you by IDFC First Bank. Always you first. And in the next episode, we'll explore the remarkable tale of the Life Insurance Corporation or LIC and their agents who offer hope when everything else seems hopeless.
आई वी एम